Your city, your podcast. Hello and welcome to Back to the Ballpark with the Washington Wild Thing, presented by Back to the Bird. Our first guest on this new series is a graduate of Central Catholic High School who has found his talents take him as far as the Big 12, where he played for the Oklahoma Sooners. Now he brings that talent and experience behind the plate at Wild Things Park. Please welcome Dom Dorenzo. Dom, how are we doing today? Hey, hey, I'm doing great, man. Doing great. How about yourself? Dude, we're, I'm doing great because I get to talk to you, man. So let's just get right <laughs> into it. it. Um, let's talk about what what was your what's your favorite baseball memory from like your, your early life? Um, from early life, I would have to say. Um, well, Beaver Valley Red is a, um, Beaver Valley is a program, travel program out like an hour out of Pittsburgh. So we, I played there for, from nine to probably like 13. Um, and our team went down to the elite 32 classic and we came in second, unfortunately, but it was a lot of good teams. We beat some crazy teams and it was the most fun I've ever had playing. So that's probably Probably it, even though we didn't win, but it was still a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, the Beaver Valley ball. That's a lot of people did that. Uh, I, did, I yeah. didn't get the chance. I also don't think I was good enough, but <laughs> it, it sounds like it was a lot of fun. What What are some of the places, like some of your favorite places you traveled to doing that? Oh, well, we went we went to East Cobb every year, um, East Cobb, Georgia. Uh, we went to Florida. Um, we went to, we had a lot of Ohio tournaments, but I think that was kind of just, um, warm up games kind of for but there was always some good teams not to say they weren't good teams but <laughs> um warm up games for the bigger tournaments um we went to we never went west really midwest or anything like that say to the east coast we were all over north carolina south carolina um we traveled everywhere so it was a lot of fun ryan cox uh shortstop for a lot of things like last year or year before he played for beer valley too so I knew I my first year on the Wild Things I knew him previously, which was kind of nice, you know. Got to got to uh, kind of bond over that a little bit. Yeah, I was gonna say, what what's the kind of talent you got to play with? Um, like you said, Cox played last year for the Wild Things. Who are some other guys that you got to play with that are now either with the Wild Things or used to be with the Wild Things or even in the MLB? Um, Wild Things. I think that's about it with, with Cox. I think there was some guys earlier that I might've known um, that were older than me, but um, on my Beer Valley team, Connor Coward, he went to Virginia Tech, played Seneca Valley, um, and now he's with the Cardinals. He's nasty. Um, and then there's some other guys that I know from Beer Valley. Uh, Julian Cox played football, but he didn't play baseball. Um, but that's pretty much it. Not too many guys from my team made it uh, a lot. James Fatalski, he went to UMBC. I know that. So he's pretty good. He was BV too, but not a wild thing, unfortunately. Gotcha, gotcha. But, Gotta get yeah. those guys on the team, man. Gotta get yeah. the BV boys back together. <laughs> All right, that'd be awesome. It'd be a lot of fun. Now let's get into like some of your fandom. I'm sure you grew up loving baseball, loving watching it. Who were some yeah. of your favorite players growing up? I would say that my all-time favorite player who's still playing is Yari Molina. Um, now, I think growing up, like, as a kid, I honestly didn't really watch a lot of baseball. Um, I loved playing it, but I did, I wasn't a student of the game yet. Um, now, once I got to high school, that's when it really started, and I just tried to emulate everything that Yachty did. I was like, all right, if this dude is the best catcher ever, I'm going to do exactly what he does, you know? Um, so I – learn a lot from videos and clips and uh, from that but definitely I don't know if it's just a catcher thing but when you're pull, when you're watching a game I only watch the catcher just receiving wise blocking wise everything that he does um just because I want to try and be exactly like them you know they're obviously doing something right they're in the big so yeah absolutely now with Yachty being your favorite player did you ever catch any flack from your friends since like he's a cardinal and you're growing up in Pittsburgh what's up with that yeah no I forget who is the uh who is the catcher um that was for the Pirates he's a gold glove guy went to the Blue Jays Russell Russell Martin Russell Martin yeah I liked him I liked watching him play um but 
No, I never really, I never really opened up to anyone really about who my favorite player was or anything like that. Because like so you I said, knew I better. You knew better right. to keep that private. <laughs> exactly. I just, I just never really talked to anybody about that. That was all me, you know. So I like keeping that to myself. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, what, what's your, uh, what was your first Wild Things experience? What did you go to games growing up, or was it being called by the team to play for them? Um, well, I, I actually have gone to a game when I was young, um, younger or not super young, but I think I was like in eighth grade, something like that. I went to a game, um, I think right around there with my parents and stuff. Uh, I don't remember why, or if there was a certain occasion or whatnot, I'm not really sure, but, um, but since then it was just last year or the year before, you know, when they called me and. Uh, gave me a spot so that that was you know really a good time in my life to finally get something going for me you know especially after college like that so it was it was a really really good thing for me yeah now I think I might know your favorite memory from Wild Things Park and I think it's your favorite Whippeal memory if you want to talk about that and tell us what it is yeah um Central Catholic, baby. We were we were locked and loaded. We got there. We always played this weird song on the bus. Um, we got there against – I was playing against my teammate at the time, Connor Perry. Uh, we played for All-American, another child ball for Dan Neymar. And, uh, and we were playing against Norland, and it was – that might be my favorite baseball memory, too, because I did it <laughs> myself. But yeah, uh, it was like the sixth <laughs> inning, and I hit a – what are you doing come here um I hit it's crazy but I hit a ball in the gap score run and then I came around stole third overthrew went to home that was probably my favorite baseball memory just because we were so close like we weren't the best team we didn't have the most talent you know um but we all came together collectively and just did it like it didn't matter who how good you were who you were what you did we were just like we're winning this thing um, I wish we would have took states a little more seriously, but after Whitfield, we were so pumped that we didn't even care. So it was just, yeah. <laughs> you know, we were the king of Pittsburgh. I, that, that's all it meant, you know? So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So like, what, what does it mean to you? You mentioned this in your post-game interview after that game. What does it mean to you to do something that Dan Marino couldn't? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, trust me, every time I go back to Central, they got, they got a little plaque of our picture and uh they got a little picture up of me that has a little little thing that i was in the paper and all this stuff and so i stare at it every time i take a picture of it sent to all my friends tell them about how much of a legend i was but uh <laughs> um but no it's it's really cool to do something like that that um you know someone as great as dan marino never did and i could do that it was cool but it wasn't just me like i said it was us collectively and it was really and I'm best friends with at least four or five of those teammates on that team still to this day. Um, so we got really close and it was really cool to do all that with them, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. That's, mm -hmm. that's really awesome. I wish I got, would have gotten to experience something like that. I mean, I went to Beaver and we, we won the uh, whip your track title. I, I played Love my, se it. I played my senior year, or not even played. I, I threw whatever you call it. I'm used yeah. to saying play because I played sports all, all my life. It's like right. you do track. And it's like you don't play track, you do track. No, so, I think play's probably fine. So yeah, I just I uh I decided not to play baseball to to pursue a medal. And yeah. uh, it was it was cool to get a medal, but to do it in baseball like you did or a team oriented sport like that, I think I, I that probably has a special place in your heart. Yeah. But like, I mean as far as medals go, you get to say that you did it, you know, that's no one else, but your hard work. So same, same type of thing, but yeah, baseball is pretty cool just because you get to do it. Like you said, you don't need to be the best. You don't need to be the biggest. You just need to be the best of the time, I guess, as a team. So um, yeah, it is pretty cool, but. Yeah, absolutely. So then uh, after that, you get drafted in the 40th yeah. round by the Cubs what was that call like? I, I've, I've talked to a couple people about their experience of getting drafted. I'm, I'm curious as to what yours is. Well, senior year was like the best time of my life because not only did we win Whitfield, but I was getting looked at professionally. And honestly, before my senior year, I never even thought like, I mean, I had dreams of it, but I never thought 
you know, I can play professional baseball. Um, and so when it finally started to blossom for me and started to happen, it was really cool. You know, people coming to your house, kind of talking to you about this, all this money. And I'm just 18. I'm like, yeah, that's not enough. Give me more money, you know. <laughs> um, but at the time, like looking back, like I, I, I handled it well. But like there's some things that, you know, I could have said differently or something like this. But um, no, draft day was crazy. I remember getting phone calls. You know, I wasn't a first day guy. Um, I got some phone calls second day. Um, and they were all talking to me about price and all this stuff. And, you know, I stuck to my guns because I knew I wasn't mature enough or big enough or any of that stuff yet. And I really wanted um, to learn the game more, which I, I got to do in college. But, uh, but getting drafted is like the coolest moment. I've ever had in my life. Um, it's really cool to see your name on TV too. That's pretty awesome. But um, it's a lot of fun and they really, they really make you feel like you're the one for them, you know? Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, like I said, there are some things that I would go back and maybe do differently, but I think I handled it pretty well. Um, but it was kind of crazy because after the Whitfield championship, um, I went straight to summer ball. So I didn't even get to like, you know, hang out with my friends or anything. It was all baseball, baseball, baseball. It was Whitfield draft and then summer ball. And it was, it was all a crazy, crazy time. But, but hey, that's the cool. dream. That's the dream when you're that young. Just let yeah, me let me play. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it with the draft. So. so obviously we know you decided not to go pro, which might have been a smarter decision since you got to go play in the Big 12 with the Oklahoma Sooners. Tell us what that yeah. experience was like. Oh, uh, OU is, OU is a lot of fun. Um, I, I, kids on that team for three years, you know, my roommates, my best friends. Um, first, freshman year, I remember the first thing he, our coach, Coach Hughes, we were running 300s and I was like, I was like, damn, I'm not in shape for this. And I said it right next to him and he made me run more for that because he was like, He's like, you're supposed to be working out over summer. Like, what are you doing? He's like, you're not in shape. Go ahead, run more. I had to run stadiums. Like, up OU Stadium, it's 100,000 <laughs> fans. Like, it's ridiculous. But, um, but it was definitely a culture change for me just because, you know, kind of like we were talking about earlier uh, with checkers and chess, a lot of those players, you know, taught me the game in some ways because, like, they would do certain stuff, and I'd be like, okay, well, you know, I probably wouldn't have done that, but – instead of just throw as hard as you can, hit as hard as you can, and run as hard as you can, there's other aspects of the game that OU taught me. And the coaches were amazing. You know, finally taught me how to go opposite field. Um, I don't think I went opposite field at all in high school. So it was, it was really good. And the atmosphere there was a lot of fun. Um, the things we did going to regionals, and we never went to Super. We lost. We should have beat Mississippi State. We lost Mississippi State. Um, but – Going to regionals, playing Brennan McKay at, at Louisville was a lot of yeah. fun. Um, all that stuff is is a really good time. But the Big Twelve is no joke for sure. Um, I remember my first at bat against uh, I forget who, oh, Luke and Baker for TCU. It was like he was pumping 96, 97, and I was just a little freshman. And he's the he's the same age as me, but he's six six and two fifty. I'm just like, what the hell's <laughs> going on here? And uh, but I, my first uh, bat against him, that's when I was like, oh, wow. Like, this is this, – it was like our first conference game of the year. I was like, all right, this is when stuff gets going. But, um, no, college was very eye-opening, especially especially the speed of the game. Um, Alec Hansen, who was our projected number one overall pick, was on our team at that time. And he was sitting 98 to 100. And, you know, my catching had to, got, had to get a lot better. And I – I don't think I caught a ball the first bullpen I, I caught with them. I was just like, this is way too fast. Because in Pittsburgh, I think the <laughs> fastest we had was like 88. Yeah. Um, so it was it was definitely eye-opening, and it made me a better player, obviously. Um, but as far as school and life there, it's the best. I love it. I love it. I'm actually graduating from there uh, in the fall, so I'm excited to – to finally get that degree hopefully well hey congratulations my man i appreciate it thank you but just yeah, got I it know. going yeah yeah, Sorry, yeah. Go i know myself uh we were talking earlier how I, I used to play some catcher as well and i think it was once i started to have to put sponges in my gloves 
to make sure I didn't hurt my hand. That's what I knew. It was like, oh yeah, it's not for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I buy a glove that has pads on my hand now, so it doesn't hurt my hand as bad. Yeah, it's exactly. Beautiful. <laughs> now, uh, so you had that that big stage college experience, and now you get to play um, professionally close to your hometown. What are you going to bring from that experience to Wild Things Park? I think one huge thing for me, um, you know, I, when I had TJ, I made a commitment to myself to learn the game. And that, that's where I really did thrive mentally. Um, I sat next to Skip, who's one of the best pitching coaches in the country. And every single day at practice, at games, until I started playing, sat next to him. Why did you do this? Why did you call that pitch? what are we doing here? Stuff like that. Just asking, asking, asking. Um, and I became a student of the game. And now I think I'm at a point where, you know, the game has slowed down for me and it's a good thing going into it now because I feel like I'm, I'm in a really good spot. Now, of course, when we start getting back out there, it'll probably speed up again. But um, I think just bringing the mental side of it to help these pitchers, you know, cause it's, I'm in a good spot receiving wise, catching all of that. And, you know, every catcher has that, not every catcher, but other, there's going to be other catchers on our team that, you know, they can receive, they can throw, they can hit. And what's going to separate you will separate me mental side, especially. And number two, just being a guy that these guys can rely on. Um, I think, especially the catcher position um, pitchers want, someone back there who they can rely on all the time so um just making camaraderie and kind of getting that that bond down with them i think is what separates me a little bit but um i'm not gonna like brag about myself and say like, oh i can hit better all this stuff because that <laughs> we don't know we'll, we'll have to uh, play that out but um that i think i think the mental side especially just for me but you never know you know Awesome. Awesome. Well, before we get out of here, we're going to do a little game of this or that with you. Um, and I know you're, you say you're living in Dallas, Texas right now. Yeah. But we're going to bring you back a little bit back to your uh, Pittsburgh roots here with this first question. And it is, do you prefer Permani Brothers sandwiches or Pepe's sandwiches? Permani's all day. I tell my friends about it down here all the time. They, they haven't had, I got friends from Cali. They're, they're working out with us and stuff. I'm just like, dude, I don't care about what's in Cali. Come to Pittsburgh, get them for Manny's, and it'll change your life. I, I agree. I agree. I just made some homemade ones last night. So, what? Good for you. New Jersey. <laughs> what? All right. That's now, let's legendary. get a little bit back to baseball here with the second one. Do you prefer a wood bat or a metal bat? I like a wood bat better. Um, I think wood bats expose bad hitters and metal bats let bad hitters give them some leeway uh, bats are better now nowadays but um wood bats really you really gotta lock in and i don't know i just like the sound of it a lot better everyone says the crack of the bat you know it's so true when you hear someone really hit the ball hard and really you know in bp it's a different sound for sure and it's cool it's really cool <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'd have to agree. There was a short time in my youth baseball career that I've used a wood bat in practice, and it just feels yeah. so smooth and natural off that bat than it does on a It's mountain. awesome. It's poetic. Exactly. I agree. Now we're going to get to some beer. I, I, <laughs> I assume we like to drink here. I know I like to drink. Yeah, of course. All right. So my question <laughs> is, do you prefer craft beer or light beer? I'm definitely a light beer guy for sure. Uh, I'm not a hoppy fan. I hate hoppy, but you just give me some Miller Light and I'll be fine. Miller is my favorite. I don't know why, but <laughs> I can't tell you why. Uh, like Bud Light's probably fine too, but Miller is my favorite for some reason. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you with the hops there. I'm not a big hop guy. Uh, and not hopefully a... the Wild Things have a Miller Light sponsor because you just helped them out <laughs> there if they do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now we're going to move on to some food and some ballpark food. Do you prefer yeah. a hot dog or a hamburger when you're watching a baseball game? I go hot dog. Um, I eat hamburgers all the time anyway. So it's like <laughs> ballpark I associate with hot dog and nachos. Those, those are my two go-to. Um, yeah, for sure. Hot dog. 
I agree 100%. <laughs> all right, now let's get on to some movies and stuff. You know, superhero movies are all the rage these days. So are you a Marvel yeah. fan or a DC fan? Definitely a Marvel fan. DC Justice League did not live up to the hype, and I didn't love it. But Marvel, had, Endgame and all of that, they're the best. Endgame is one of my favorite movies ever. I watch it all the time. Well, hopefully when this comes out, you had seen the Zack Snyder cut. Uh, and hopefully you can take those words back on DC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. We'll see. We'll see Sorry. if this ages well or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, my last question for you. Do you prefer to watch a ball game at the ballpark or on TV? Definitely ballpark. Um I've been watching so many spring training games that just like they just started on TV. And after a while, you know, it gets like I'm locked in, but you know, my girlfriend or people who don't love baseball, such as me, um, aren't exactly locked in. But um, you bring them to a game and everyone's locked in. So then you you can just talk about it constantly instead of just sitting there watching TV and just like, oh yeah, I could play, you know. And it's exciting when you're at the ballpark, at least for me, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dom, thank you for joining me today. This was an awesome interview. I'm glad we got to talk. And I uh, can't wait to see you back at the ballpark for the Washington Wild Thing. Yes, thank you so much, my man. I appreciate you having me on and taking time out of your day. So I really appreciate it. Absolutely.